In this episode, I'm going to tackle calibrating my ancient Hewlett Packard function generator. As we've seen in the past, the side wave is not exactly clean and its uh, output control is a bit noisy. So I'm going to see if I can get this thing tuned up and working like it's supposed to. So in this video, we're going to calibrate my Model 200 CD wide range oscillator, my HP wide range oscillator. This thing goes back to I'm going to guess around 1962-63 vintage. It's going to be at the same vintage as my old scope. So let's calibrate this unit. Now I've had this unit over 25 years. Uh, well, probably closer to 30 years now since it was given to me along with that scope. I've never calibrated it. I've never had it apart. And uh, for the most part, it's been just sitting in my garage because it doesn't get used that often. So we're probably going to find some little house guests have moved in there. I'm sure we're going to find some spiders and bugs and stuff in there once I get the top off. And this, of course, is going to be an all-vacuum tube device. So there's the inside of my audio generator. As you can see, it's all tubes. Got a big transformer. It's got... Uh, what, how many tubes has this thing got in it? It's got... Three tubes here and a couple more on the other side two more here and what's down below is there anything down below on this thing I don't think so no so it's got five tubes some big filter caps and of course this nice big tuning capacitor now one thing I want to do is I just want to clean the output control because it's kind of dirty. I can hear it when I turn up and down. So I want to get some spray into this control without getting it everywhere. Although this control might be challenging to get spray into because it looks like it's sealed. give the unit a once over in an inspection here. Now remember this is a vacuum tube unit so the capacitors on something like this can store a charge for quite a while after it's been turned off because if the tubes aren't hot there's nothing to draw the B plus down as they cool down. As you can see it looks like I've had spiders and stuff building webs in here. This thing's all full webs and bugs and stuff. It's been sitting around for many, many years. I got this and that old scope at the same time. But it actually looks to be in pretty good shape. I just have to tighten up the, I just tightened up the, the set screw here so that there's no more uh, play in the, the knob. When I turn the frequency control, it turns it. And the fine adjustment down here will move it slowly. All the fine adjustment does is, to, if you can see here, it's just a, it just turns the edge of the, the actual dial. It's just a friction to turn the edge of the dial slowly. So this is the main control. So going to power this thing up. We'll put it on the scope and measure the frequency from here and check to see how good the waveform is coming off of this unit. I remember it was kind of distorted before, but I have put a 600 ohm load across the output here. So I just want to check it for the amplitude and calibration, and we'll check the frequency on it and see if it's any clearer now that I cleaned up the controls on it. It's not on, because the power light's not on the front here. Oh, the tubes are heating up, so why is the power light not on? Hmm. I believe the problem with the light is just the light lamp holder itself. That's the problem with the light. It is working, it's just the lamp holder. This kind of... Corroded or got some oxidation on here or something. 
but the light is now working. I just moved it. It's got a couple of uh, these. These are going to be current monitoring through light bulbs. And if something were to short, these would light up. But let's check the frequency accuracy. Right now I've got it going into my frequency counter so we can see what it is. I want to calibrate the dial so that it's exactly correct. So I've got the dial set for exactly 600 Hertz. You can hear it on my th speaker in the background there. And I'm looking at the output here on the scope. Scope showing 582. If I adjust this control here, I don't want to break that. That's a pretty stiff control. I'll have to do it with a screwdriver even though this is going to throw my readings off. So I'm going to have to kind of guess here. 586. 594. 599. Getting there. 600. Okay. Now if I turn this down to read 400 exactly, notice at the top of the waveform it's a little bit flat and that's a, a problem with the unit that I'm going to have to resolve before I can get this thing properly calibrated. Yeah. Should be right at 400 now. Pretty darn close, 401. There we go. If I turn it down to 200, Should be right around 200 there. Okay. 198, I think I'm close enough. 100 hertz. The thing that uh, disturbs me is the waveform is not. It's not a nice true sine wave. The top side is a little bit uh, distorted. We'll try 10 hertz. Yeah, 10.27 hertz is what's showing there. I'll take this thing down to f about 5 hertz. Five point zero seven. This is just some noise that's being picked up by the actual test lead itself. Well, you know, it must be uh, that time of the year when uh, the ice cream guy is coming by. Not even summer yet, but there he goes. So 600 hertz. Next one up, 6 kilohertz. Just tweaking this up ever so slightly. Six kilohertz. Hmm. If I adjust though. Master oscillator here. I'm at 500 hertz now. You notice that it's cleaning up my my waveform. Five hundred hertz. Or right, that by the way is a control. It's right down here on the chassis. This affects the wave shape and the base oscillator frequency. So now I've calibrated for five hundred hertz. It's gonna check the calibration across the, the band itself, across the, the, the actual tuning capacitor. So now we're set for 1 kilohertz. We'll go to 2 kilohertz here. And 
set one of the trimmers to two kilohertz. Okay, let's take a look as we go through the bands. Five hertz, 50 hertz, 500 hertz, 'm nice and clean as you can see now five kilohertz 50 kilohertz close enough 49.46 I think that's close enough and when I sweep this up to the top end of the dial we should be sitting pretty darn close to 600 kilohertz right now 600 kilohertz ah I'm done and as you can see the waveform is beautiful. So I sweep it down in frequency and I'll drop the time base on the scope. Looking great. Even if I go down to only a few hertz here, take this way down. So we are now at five, just a little below five hertz, because that should be five, about five hertz right there. There we go, five hertz, so it goes down to just slightly below five hertz. It's tracking perfect. And on this old beast, how it's set is the low end of the dial is set with this control here, and then the, the high end on the tuning capacitor is set with these trimmers. So this is the low end when the capacitor is at its at its highest capacity because the, the plates are in, right? And as you turn it up, you see the capacitor opens up, so the capacity drops. So when you're at the high end, these trimmers here, these affect your total capacitance of the capacitor. This, this adjusts your high end um, and picofarads. And then the main oscillator is done with that. So calibration is just a matter of checking your frequency at the low end and then again checking the frequency at the high end. And all the bands are tracking perfectly so I don't have to worry about that. So my HP, I guess I shouldn't be on that low frequency, that low, low good way to blow up my woofers. It is now... back in service. Thanks for watching.